In this video, I'll show you two ways to turbocharge your VFR flight planning using the ForeFlight application. In May of 2024, the updated Private Pilot ACS specifically allowed the use of electronic flight bag applications. However, my students and I have been using it as a learning and practice tool for over five years, and we've used it to plan hundreds of cross-country flights. Let's use an example to demonstrate how you can make flight planning faster and more efficient. Before we can plan a flight, we need to make sure we've defined and selected an airplane in ForeFlight. Here, you can see that I've created a Piper Archer 3 with the registration number November 12345 and used the POH to calculate the appropriate performance numbers for the performance profile. Oh, just a quick note. If you use the Performance Plus version of ForeFlight, the app supplies the performance numbers for you, making the planning even easier. Oh, by the way, if you struggle to remember all the steps necessary to plan a VFR flight, I've created a checklist you can download for free. The link is in the description. In a previous set of videos, I planned a flight from KRST to KMCW, and it took about an hour to do by hand. How long do you think it will take using ForeFlight? Let's see. First, open ForeFlight and click on the Maps function. Next, open the Flight Planning window, make sure the right aircraft is selected in the upper left corner, and the correct performance profile is selected right below that. Use the button on the bottom right to select an estimated departure time. In the Flight Plan box, type KRST, a space, then KMCW, and enter or return. Next, select the altitude using the bottom left button. We use the MEF figures on the sectional to make sure we aren't flying too low, but ForeFlight helps us select the optimal altitude by showing the forecast winds at differing heights. In a flash, ForeFlight not only draws the route on the sectional, it also shows the flight distance, the estimated fuel usage, the time en route, as well as the average headwind component. If you'd like more detail, you can click on the nav log button to see the flight broken down by legs, and it shows the wind corrected magnetic course, the distance, fuel use, and the estimated time for each leg. The total time to plan this flight? Less than five minutes. But to pass your private pilot check ride, you're gonna need to demonstrate pilotage and dead reckoning. This current flight plan doesn't provide enough detail for that. To effectively use pilotage and dead reckoning, we'll need several visual waypoints along our route to help make sure we're not only on course, but also give us plenty of notice should ground speed and fuel calculations indicate we need to make a stop. Fortunately, ForeFlight makes that easy too. If you recall from a previous video about flight planning, we learned that waypoints should be ground-based features that are easy to see from the air, they should be slightly left or right of the actual course to make them easier to spot when flying, and they should be between 10 and 20 nautical miles apart. With that in mind, we chose the following waypoints for the earlier videos. We'll start from KRST. Then, 18 nautical miles southwest from the airport, the interstate makes a turn from southwest to westerly. We'll call that check one. Then, the town of Lyle, which is 13 nautical miles from the turn in the highway, we'll call that check two. The town of Manly is 17 nautical miles from Lyle and will be check three. Then finally, our destination is KMCW. One last thing about waypoints. While they're actually off to the right or the left of the airplane, we'll mark them on our route. We'll just need to remember to look left or right when flying. After we've measured the distance between the waypoints and marked them along our route, we can add them to the flight plan by carefully tapping the route line at that point and then accepting the selection. Even adding these steps only adds a couple of minutes. Still, we're far quicker than the 51 minutes, and look at the extra detail that's now part of the extended flight plan. Oh, but look at how crooked that line is. While this may not be a big deal if we're letting ForeFlight do the planning and you're planning to use GPS to fly the route, if your instructor or pilot examiner is going to make you show you can calculate some or all of this by hand, you'll want the route to be as straight as possible. Every little direction change, even if it's only by a few degrees, means that you've got to do all of the calculations from two true course to magnetic heading for every waypoint. However, if the route line is straight and the wind stays the same, you can usually use the same magnetic heading and ground speed for multiple waypoints. There must be a way to create waypoints along the route that doesn't create a wonky route line, and fortunately there is. However, doing so will require us to measure or recalculate our distances. Instead of measuring the distance between each waypoint, we'll need to measure the distance between our departure airport and each of the waypoints. 
Doing that, we end up with the following distance. From KRST to check one is 18 nautical miles. From KRST to check two is 31 nautical miles. From KRST to check three is 48 nautical miles. And finally, we already know that the distance between KRST and KMCW is 58 miles. Next, we'll double check our true course. Using the ruler, it appears to be 219 degrees, and now we have enough information to enter our revised waypoints. So, go back to the flight plan box and tap the KRST chiclet. Then select Insert After KRST from the menu. In the resulting box, type the departure airport, a slash, the true course, another slash, then the distance from the airport. For the first waypoint, that would look like this, KRST slash 219T for true, slash 18, and then enter. The second waypoint will insert after the waypoint we just created, and it will be KRST slash 219T slash 31. The third waypoint will be inserted after our second and will be KRST slash 219T slash 48. Now look at how straight that route line is. <laughs> now we have a viable flight plan that only took about 10 minutes to create. Plus, if your iPad has or is connected to a GPS while flying, it will update the nav log with the information as you move from one segment to the next. Unfortunately, in most cases, you won't be able to use GPS navigation for your check ride, so you'll need to be able to track your leg times and calculate how close your actual flight is to your plan and whether or not you'll have to make a stop for fuel. Or flight can help with that too. First, you'll need to move your flight plan into the flight section. To do that, Tap the Share icon, then select Flights. The Flight feature is a powerful planning and management set of tools that not only allows you to create and manage flight plans, but it also allows you to save them for future use. Get weather briefings, check weight and balance, file both VFR and IFR flight plans, and much, much more. We'll explore more of these features in a future video. For now, we're just interested in the Enhanced Navigation Log. Once you've moved your flight plan into flights, you can access your nav log by clicking the purple nav log button at the top of the flight screen. Along the top of the nav log is the summary of the flight, including time and route, fuel usage, and weight and balance estimates. The next section is your waypoint by waypoint flight plan, including calculated top of climb and top of descent points. And just like the log we created by hand, this nav log includes direction and course information, altitudes, airspeed and ground speed estimates, leg distances, fuel estimates, and estimates of the times necessary to fly each leg. Finally, it leaves blank spaces for you to record the actual times, which will be used to calculate your actual ground speed and fuel usage. The third section lists winds and temperatures aloft forecasts for each waypoint at various altitudes, so you can see what values were used to calculate performance. The next section is a summary of information that will be used if you file a flight plan, plus, the notes section provides spaces to enter hobs and tack in and out times. This can be very helpful for those of us renting our training aircraft. The bottom section provides information and diagrams of your departure and destination airports. This includes important frequencies and airport diagrams and highlights the location of local FBOs. And updating this plan for a new date and updated weather is as easy as going back to the flights page and clicking the refresh icon at the top right. Now, you can use this enhanced navigation log in a couple of different ways. First, you can use it as a training tool. To do that, make up several cross-country routes, select an altitude, select your waypoints, and plot them out using the for flight map function. Then, move your creation into the flights tool and print out the nav log. Now, use the altimeter settings, winds, and temperatures from the nav log to do the performance and navigation calculations by hand and compare them to what ForeFlight came up with. The results might not be exactly the same because you'll be doing estimations, rounding, and interpolation, while ForeFlight will be more specific, but they should be pretty close. If they are, congratulate yourself and make up a new scenario. If your results are significantly different, try to figure out why. Ask your instructor for help. This is great practice and, in a nerdy way, it's kind of fun. Second, you can print out the extended navigation log and use it as your actual flight plan for either a lesson or for your check ride. ForeFlight makes changes and updates really fast and really easy, but don't get lazy. For your check ride, you will still need to make sure all the calculations make sense, and you may even have to redo some of the calculations by hand to prove to your pilot examiner that you understand the process. So there you are. 
Two ways to use ForeFlight to turbocharge your flight planning. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you'd like to see more information about planning by hand, watch this video next. <laughs> oh, don't forget to use the link in the description to download the free cross-country flight planning checklist. And as always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.